I am in Meaford, Ontario, talking to Brad Coons of Top Shelf Mushrooms. Brad is doing some really innovative and unique stuff on his farm right now. One of those things is he's designed an auto bag filling machine where you can fill dry ingredients into your substrate bags and add water. Everything's automated. He's designed a robot. I have never seen anything like this in the industry. I am so excited to show you guys exactly how this works. I'm going to be hopefully trying this on my farm. Brad is looking to sell this. So we're going to go over the details. I'll leave a link for his email below if you guys want to get in touch with Brad. Stay tuned for that because that's coming up in this video. Basically, it bags dry materials onto a left side and to a right side. So while you're taking the bag off, folding it and putting it in your steamer, it can keep working on the right side. So this is really my first run of the prototype. Uh, Brian just happened to be here, so he wanted to do a video of it. And so I'll give you a kind of a quick demo. Basically, we can set the weight, the supplement percentage, and the moisture level. And it will do that to the hundredth of a pound. So when I run it really slow, I get to about a half a percent accuracy. But for most of us, I mean, we, 1% or 2% would be fine. So I could probably run this about two times to maybe even three times as fast as you're going to see it run. But let's just give it a go with the default program. So it gives me a five count. It opens a little gate so that nothing spills on the table. Um, and here it goes. First layer is pellets. And then I put wheat bran in, in a second layer. That goes a little slower because I wanted to get that exact. So I'm going for 0.38 pounds, and there it's 0.38 pounds exact. Adds another layer of pellets on top. Now it's going to run some water. Oh, if I turn the water on. <laughs> There we go, 3.23 pounds exactly. Now let's start working on this side. I'm a one-man shop, so as long as I can, it can go as fast as I do with getting this ready and getting the next bag ready, my speed would be fine right now. I want it to go faster. So if I get it a little faster, I'd be ready to put the next one in. So, what do you guys think? There we go. Bag sensor is working. This one is not. So I think I know why this one's not working. So I have the wrong pin number. Use the complete nerd glasses, which are 3x. I can't see squat, except I'm getting on really close. snap them out, I can get the gussets to flare and they stay loaded. See, like that's way easier if I definitely snap them out. Okay, so I'm going to try and I'm not going to waste bran, so I'm going to adjust my um, supplement mixture. I'm going to bring that down to 14%. So it does a little bit of pellets, does the bran, you can see it climbing. Why is it saying the bag's not there? The bag is there. 
So that's something new. Oh, no, no. It's... So I got 0.27 on 0.26. It's over by 1.04%. You can add the rest of the pellets. Now it's at 1.69. There we go. So, so, got... you, so you have a program to go pellet, brand pellet? Yep. Why is that getting water over there first? Because <laughs> something's off. So, so that's that's new. Eventually, I'd make a 3D printed case to hold the circuit board. Then I can ensure it's going to be tight and stuff. Not vibrations, not going to rattle things. Okay, power. working on the code design? Uh, I built the frame. It's definitely still shorting somewhere. Um, code's probably 60 or 70 hours worth of work. This thing is called a shield. Why, what's the benefit of a shield? Is that you could just take it off. And if the board's faulty, you can just pop a new board in. As long as you get all the pins lined up right. And how do they interact together? One of them, the front one, is an LCD display. So it has all the code, the hardware, everything that's necessary in order to make the LCD, the buttons and stuff, be able to talk to the computer. That just was not see. Oh, that's what's going on. Man, the problem with the rat's nest is that you have rats. So this little wire is caught under a pin. I'm pretty sure that that is it. But before I seat everything, I'm just going to... Stable. Beautiful. Just run a little test. Is there any risk of you getting electrocuted? Five volts? Nope. Right there, no. No, there's 12 volts and five volts. 12 volts is a car battery, but it has a ton of amps behind it. This is barely an amp. It has three output lines. It's 300 watt capacity. But, um, so I have 12 volts comes in. This guy changes it to five volts. The motors that drive these 12 and 18 volt drills are just 12 volts because it an 18 volt drill will still work with 12 volts. Otherwise, drills wouldn't work as your battery would just start to die. So, I use that 12 volts to be able to drive the two drills. I use the 5 volts for various circuit boards that want voltage to be at 5. And even some of the servos get driven with 5 volts. But this little board, even though it puts out 5 volts, it's not a beefy 5 volts. It's a pretty weak 5 volts. It's useful for like little small boards and things like that. So, in other words, I need a strong, a strong power supply that's independent of the board. And that's what I've recently changed. It's all trial and error once you realize that turning the solenoid on and off or slapping a relay closed and open puts strain on the electrical system. And computers don't like variations in, in the supply of the electrical system. So, um, where the, there's that. And I'm just going to run a quick... Uh, test of a few functions. Test the scales. How did you come up with the, uh, this design? Um, like what was your inspiration? I think seeing a, another mushroom grower, Andrew Collier-Reed and Benjamin Erickson, who developed Thor, and theirs was a mechanical system where they slid a rod and it would catch a certain amount of one substrate and then catch a certain amount of supplement and it was fixed and then they would have a separate bucket that was a certain size that would dump and fill a certain fixed amount of water. And I thought to myself, well that's great if it's you always do exactly the same recipe. How could you change it so you could get a varying amount of each one that would suit different mushroom species? So 
I thought about, well, how would I fill a bag with two things at the same time and then add water all in one place without having to move from station to station? Ideally, like for workflow, do you think this is a two-man operation? I think it's a one-man operation. That's really what I wanted, is I wanted to say, figure out how small farms could eliminate labor, um, simplify what they're doing, maybe ha or have their workers do more productive things. Um, so I tried to look at saying, I need to put something in this bag, and I need to put this bag right in this chamber. So I put them close together. One person does as fast as they can go and put it in there. And you can hold how much uh, bran and how much pellets? One 50-pound bag of bran with this size hopper and about 100 pounds of pellets. So a few times during a full production run to get a target of 400 blocks for 200 bags, dry weight, um, then we'd really need 200 pounds total. So one fill up and then a second refill. Right now, this is a working prototype, but you think you're pretty close to having it completed? Yeah, I should be able to start actually producing on it um, tomorrow or the next day. Uh, okay. Most of the major functions are tested, but as far as the final software build and adding the diagnostic menus, or so that if somebody you know, wanted me to make them one of these and they were remote and I needed to troubleshoot it, I would say run the diagnostic program like every Star Trek and you'd get some spit out, some stuff that would be meaningful to let me know did one of the boards stop working, did the bags work, did the water work, did the motors work, are they going the right directions? How many, how many hours of testing would you need? I think I'm probably going to need a good three or four production runs before I know what can be improved next. Crude mounting screws for the time being. So I painted this cookie tray, basically just so I didn't have to look at all the electronics that are going on behind it. And it's not pretty. It's prettier. All right. Um, I'm going to re reload some code from my computer. Give it a minute to transfer. And it'll beep when it's ready. So let's see what happens when I turn this on. Hey, good. No water's flowing. So it puts in the first batch of pellets, puts in the bran, gets the bulk in, and you can hear it pulsing just to be a little bit more accurate. There we go. So we got 1.05 what we were looking to get. So that's a little bit of an overage on the the brand, and now it's taking that into consideration for how many pellets it's putting in. So it adjusts the pellet weight for the overage on the, there we go. So, puts the water in. So the drills are, uh, the, you have an auger placed into the drill. Mm -hmm. And it goes reverse and backwards when it, when it switches to different sides for the bags. Correct. And then you have a flow meter. Not a flow meter. A scale. Each one of these is its own scale. So now it's going to work on that side. So I can take this bag. So the water's on a solenoid and the scale controls the solenoid? Scale controls the solenoid, exactly right. So holding my bag, putting it over, and now, and even though it's squishy, that will hydrate. So there's an error in my code here. It's going to keep going. So I'm going to debug this guy. But the first, the first side works. Now I just got to fix the code so that when side two is running, it runs. Why, why do you like the gates? Like, why do you think they're necessary? Because from what I see, it's not even that messy. It's just, it's more so when the, when the auger is dealing with some of these kinds of materials, they're not very, um, it's not that messy, but it's just one of those things that I see it, and if I can close it while I'm not getting a bag. When you put a bag in and you start bumping these things, mm -hmm. stuff falls out. But if you, if you rolled this like to your garage and you're working kind of outside, it would 
Wouldn't be a big deal, no. Wouldn't be a big deal. No, so it's not essential. It's just I thought, oh, that's a problem I could solve with some, mm-hmm. some fun. Yeah, well, it's a cool idea. And um, I'm going to put my pin back on this guy, and then I'll give it a try. So the, the coolest thing about this is right now you're doing five pound bags, but yeah. you can program it to do 10 pound bags or, or whatever you want. Exactly. And not only that, you can do it all in the same run. So I could do 14 five pound bags and then 26 10 pound bags, or I could do half of them at 20% supplement and then switch over to doing 12% supplement if I wanted to do reishi or something that benefits for less supplement. Midway through a batch, I could just change it. So as soon as I get to the last one, turn the power off and I walk away and there's no cleanup because I've used exactly the amount of supplement and sawdust that I want. I haven't made a big giant pile or have excess that's sitting in my ribbon mixer that I need to throw out or because that's all waste. I mean, if you put a bunch of wheat bran in a ribbon mixer and wheat bran's Organic wheat brands, 50 cents a pound here in Canada. And then you've got 20 pounds left over in the mixer. You got 10 bucks worth of wheat bran you just wasted. You got to factor that into your costs. So, you know, nobody does the math perfectly on those things and mixing it exactly for whatever chamber they're going to fit. So this, I have a counter that tells me exactly how many bags I've made and how many pounds I've gone through. So I know that translates into a certain exactly amount of yield. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm thinking that... Re- problems that it solves, especially for a grower that doesn't have the capital to invest in a ribbon mixer or a lot of equipment. This, you you can literally say, I'm going to make some bags right now, and within a, two minutes, you've started. So you're looking to possibly sell this as a complete package, or you think uh, it might be better for just selling the components and then they have someone has to build the rest with with the design what are your thoughts on how you want to bring this to market I think I think both of them are possible I think uh, um, it depends where the interest lies if somebody says you know I don't know how to build these things and once I get this polished up and I start 3d printing some parts and getting things a little bit more looking like a professional product um, and not so much of a prototype then yeah I might I might print this off. It's just big and bulky, so shipping's a problem. So that's why I always thought it'd be nice to make all the hard stuff be done in a package, and really you just have to wire up and plumb stuff and maybe make the hoppers because they're heavy. Because you're looking to sell blocks for growers, right? and you don't really have a lot of labor, nor do you want to waste money on labor. So this is something that's going to allow you to scale up. Uh, in Ontario, the minimum wage went from 11 to $14 an hour, and so it's creating an incentive for growers of any kind, whether it be vegetable or fungi, to say, how do I use my labor more wisely, or use less labor, or automate things? So I wanted to automate a lot of the wasteful things that, that, are, that are time intensive. and. Um, and provide the flexibility. The thing I found myself doing is I would mix batches together and then realize that I have I don't have the right mix for a certain species that I want to grow. That's just going to be a small batch run within a larger batch run. The other thing I wanted to do was to say and this is this is where I think this is completely unique. I want to be able to find out what's the exact moisture percentage and what's the exact supplement percentage that gives me the peak yield of the species that I'm growing on my substrate and my supplement. Do you have ideas of substrate mixes you'd like to play around with in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Certainly with sawdust and wheat bran, they both can be augured as as we've seen um, with this. So soybean hulls, um, uh, raw sawdust instead of pellets, and um, could even probably work with wood chips. I mean, an auger that's that diameter, I could, I could certainly increase the size of the auger if I needed to use something that was bulkier materials, but um, uh, somebody even asked me, what if you wanted to do three ingredients? Well, I've got two hoppers, but it's conceivable that another one could, a small, you know, if somebody wanted to add cottonseed meal or uh, alfalfa pellets or something else that was you know, unique as far as a three ingredient blend, that could be probably done with something on this side that's a small quantity, like where 2% is added. Um, the nice thing is that with the accuracy of the scale, it's to the hundredth of a pound. 
So, um, and you know, the augering ratios, I've seen it be as accurate as a half percent on what you're looking to do for weight. So I think you can dial it in quite well and see a consistency from block to block once you figure out what that magic formula is. But the nice thing with that spectrum, I said, is you, can, you might try 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 percent in separate bags and then do that again with varying moisture levels and just push one button, have the system do that test for you and you put stickers on all the bags and when you see it grow, you know, visually, you're doing 100 trials in one iteration. So you're, you're going to get to your peak faster. Well, I like it. And I think uh, there's not too many things you can buy for small mushroom-based businesses. Um, the industry, there's a lot of, a lot of experimentation and a lot of uh, individual design that you need to put in for your, for your business. And there really isn't stuff you can buy to, to work on efficiencies and kind of scale up. So even this piece of equipment doesn't really exist yet. And I, I think there really is a need for it. I think a lot of small farms would would buy this for sure if, if it was accessible and it was affordable. Well, having had two farms, uh, two different locations so far, and now this hopefully is my last farm, not because I want to get out of it, because I finally own my land and I don't have to deal with landlords and issues with rent and things like that, that I'm here. And I was really trying to say, how can I operate a higher volume farm in a smaller footprint? And so and get to knowledge quicker with substrate and not have to have a lot of labor. So, um, I mean, it's capitally intensive to get into mushroom farming, especially if you want to do it at scale. Uh, you know, ribbon mixers, several thousand dollars. Um, and then, you know, a bagging station with a foot pedal and a, and a conveyor belt, and then there's a whole bunch of time cleaning up afterwards. I just thought, there's gotta be a better way. Even um, just the way I do it, I need a 40 by 50, foot piece of cement where we mix our wood chips and prep and we have to dry everything on a lot of land before we can use it you know this this is really attractive if you don't have access to a lot of land and, and if you're just starting out and you have a small budget so this is just a uh, demonstrating this gate function where where it basically wants to seal these um, needs a little adjustment on this side but this side's good um, I'll adjust it when it comes down. And this is the last thing you're working on in yeah. the code right now. Correct. This is just testing whether I can close these gates so that if a pellet falls down when it's closed, and I can demonstrate something, because sometimes when you're bagging and you tap it, stuff falls in, but it doesn't fall down on the table. And so when you put the bag on, so I'm just testing the functionality. This is a diagnostic mode right now. Uh, and I will reset out of that because I just wanted to see if I could get this working. So this guy just needs its screw tightened so that it's uh, lined up properly. So it closes the gates to start so you can get your bags on. And I'm going to reuse this dirty bag. This might fail, so this is fun. I actually like troubleshooting. Well, that's uh, how you learn. That's right. So I'm going to just see if I can get my motor, so I'm going to do a test. Let me first test my scales. 0, 0.0, put a little weight. That one's working. This one's working. Great. Reset everything. And now I'm just going to, they just flare when they first start, just to make sure that they're working. And now I'm going to test a motor. This is the moment of truth. This is unfortunately what I think is going to fail. <laughs> it didn't fail. This is very good news. So a little explanation. The computer I'm using has internal timers. The timers are used from everything from my bag sensor to what runs these individual motors to what sends the signal and communicates with this LED display to whole bunch of other components in the back end. Um, when you engage the servos, these servos chew up one of those timers. And what was happening is it wasn't letting me use another timer to run my motors at the same time that I'm running my servos. But I just ran a little test program on the right motor 
I'm going to just make sure my left motor works too. Uh, test left motor. It just runs the motor left, right, left, right, just a little bit just to make sure that it's working forward and backwards. So that's a little test pattern that I programmed in there just to diagnose things before you push go and try it. So now that we know we're pretty good, I'm going to um, turn my water on, which I've got a, a shut off valve down there that's quick and easy to shut off. And then I also have another valve to throttle how fast I want this to fill. If I go wide, wide open, this will fill in two seconds, but it won't be very accurate. And then that screws with my moisture percentages. So there's a trade-off between accuracy and speed. So I have a solution to that, which I'm going to rig up a high speed and a low speed parallel fill line. So that this system will just say, hey, open both solenoids. So low and high are running together, feeding water in. And then when I get to the point where I'm 80% of the water I want, I'm going to shut off the high water. And all that's left is that slow running water. So the water stream will instantly go from filling high to slow. And so I can, as it's going slow, I can watch it get close to 100% of the water I want and sh cut it off with a lot less uh, overshoot or undershoot. So um, that's my way to fix that. So that should make this even faster. So I'm going to give it a go, and we'll try a, um, a, a, a run with it with all the new code, including the gates. Up, it failed. Didn't open the gate. <laughs> but I'm surprised how much that gate can hold with that just little tiny servo. Wow. Well, the point is, is this is a prototype, and we're still we're still trying to figure out the case. <laughs> That's a lot of pellets. It looked like it did too many pellets. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't weighing them because it was hitting the, it was oh, hitting yeah, the, that makes sense. the gate. <laughs> there we go. All right, Brad, well, I appreciate your time. and Work in progress. Hopefully we have an update uh, for everyone soon. But this is uh, pretty exciting stuff, and this is truly an innovative piece of equipment for the mushroom industry. And I'm really stoked to see this firsthand. I'm excited to get this on my farm this year, hopefully, if not in 2019. And see if uh, see if I can uh, cut down some hours and increase some productivity on my farm just uh, with this awesome piece of equipment. I'm really excited. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. All right. If you're looking to get in touch with Brad, I'm going to leave his email in the show notes below. Brad is looking to work on this prototype this year and kind of come up with a way to produce this so that it's easy for customers to duplicate. He's not sure if if it's going to be like a kit where you get all of the pieces or maybe just the actual components when he comes up with uh, a box that's waterproof and kind of airtight where you can put all of his controls in there. Again, this is just a prototype, but you know, leave, leave your comments below if you guys want to kind of give Brad an idea of what you're looking for in something like this, kind of how much money you think this is worth to you. Again, this is going to save you so much labor. I am so excited to get something like this on my farm. And really, the only way to get something like this right now is to design it yourself. And you need to have a background in engineering like Brad does, or at least you need to have, be able to do some coding. This is not an easy task to do. So Brad is trying to simplify this process. He has so many years experience in the industry and he has a background that allows him to design something like this. So, you know, we're really interested to know what you guys think and kind of what is the best way to package this and sell to the consumer. So leave your comments below guys. We'll be in touch. If you want to get in touch with Brad, just send him an email. We'll talk to you guys soon in the next video.